Welcome to the Island Stroll Cal Part 7. I'm Tess from Sisters in Stitch and together with the amazing team of Yarn and Colors we have come together to bring you these two projects that are either a pillow or a blanket depending on what yarn weight you are using. So this week is the very last week that we are making squares so this will be our grand finale and it's the gorgeous and super cute A Little Something Square. She holds this beautiful flower in the center and then are surrounding by heart-shaped sections together with a few little broom stitches. This would probably be the trickiest square I think we have made so far, only due to this little section. But I will guide you through it, show you stitch by stitch and I also have a solution if you can't make this work for you, okay? So just follow along and I'll show you. So to make this square, this very exact one with all the same colors, you will need six colors of the Must Have Yarns by Yarn and Colors in the shades Mustard, Old Pink, Pearl, Cream, Ecru and Limestone. And you will also need a 3mm hook, a scissor and a darning needle to tackle those ends. And if you're making the blanket version, you will need exactly the same colors, but in the yarn Super Must Have, together with a 6mm hook. And as you can tell, there is quite a size difference. So when you have finished your square in Must Haves for the pillows, it will measure 12.5 times 12.5 centimeters. And this blanket beauty will measure 23 centimeters unblocked just stretched and what I mean by stretching is that this is a non-blocking project these will straighten themselves out as we attach them to our projects either the blanket or the pillow and this one will be as you can tell a little bit more of a wavy one before we are attaching them and it's due to this little section so don't worry just make sure that you have the right amount of stitches and you'll be fine and no matter what colorway you are working on, either saunter in the sunlight, stroll by the sea or walk in the woods, you can find all the color changes on the little divider notes that appears in between the rounds. And as always with us here at Sisters in Stitch, we are using US terminology throughout and you can find all the abbreviations, stitches used and terminology in our stitch guide that is placed on our homepage sistersinstitch.com as a free download together with the free written patterns that is available both as a printer friendly version along with a screen friendly one as well. So without further ado, get your things and let's begin. So to begin we start with a magic circle. You can of course choose a chain start too if you want to, but I prefer this because I think they give the neatest closures, okay? And into this magic circle, we are making 10 single crochets. So I'm starting off right away with the standing one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 like that and then I'm simply pulling back the yarn putting it through the circle and tighten not all the way we still want a little gap to work in our next round so just leave yourself some space and then slip stitch into the very first single crochet of the round like that For round number two, we are now making spike single crochets, which are essentially the same as a normal single crochet. The only difference is that we're not going into the stitch, but back down around it through the circle here, okay? So I will chain one for the height. This is not a stitch, this is just a height, okay? So just go back in, grab the yarn, pull up a loop to the working height, and finish like a normal single crochet, like that. And then we do this 15 more times because we are having 16 spike single crochets in total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just gonna scooch them over a little bit. Nine, ten. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and the very last one, 16. Okay, so my center here grew a little bit, so I'm just going to pull on the yarn and tighten quite roughly. It can take it, it's cotton. And we still have a little gap here, but I will show you exactly how to close it by sewing it in, okay? So just cut your yarn and meet me up to fasten off. Okay, so we are now about to sew this shut. So I have thread my needle with the starting end, and then I'm just going under some stitches here and just tighten. Look, it already closed a lot. I'm going back a tiny little bit, not too much because I don't want it to show. And then I just keep on going around. This will secure the thread. So you are going in a little bit before where you came out and then just tighten and repeat. And you do this all the way around and it should come somewhat to a close. And when you are happy with your result, you simply back down and go backwards a little bit to secure your thread. So we are going in the opposite direction now towards ourselves, just to make sure that everything is fastened off nice and well. And then we snip off the thread. And we now have this cute little start. So we are simply fastening off with an invisible joint to the second stitch, being the second single crochet of the round and not the chain one that gave us the height, okay? So you simply go under the front loop and the back loop of the stitch, so through the entire stitch, gently pull. You want this thread to line up with the same bars as over here. And then we are going back down our last stitch of the round the last single crochet through the back loop and the third loop like that and now you see that this little thread is poking out so we are going under it you see i'm going in and under and just go through with my thread because this will pull it to the back and hide it quite well so i'm just gonna go back again up it like that and then back down. So I have sewn in the ends and gotten that little one out of the way. Win-win. So that's the fastening off. Let's continue on with round number three. For round number three, we are creating these lovely little places for our petals to be in. So we are simply choosing any single crochet from the previous round and make a standing crochet like that and then we chain two so one and two and in the next stitch we do a single crochet and this is the repeat so in the next stitch we are making a single crochet and chain two and then we make a single crochet in the next stitch and then we do a single crochet in the next stitch and chaining two a single crochet in the next followed by a single crochet and the chain two in the next. So every other, just keep on going all the way around and you should have eight chain two spaces. Okay, so do this all the way around and meet me up to close. And there we have it. So we have now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight little pointer places of our darling little beginning. And we simply close with a slip stitch to the first stitch, which is the first single crochet because we are carrying on with the same yarn for round number four. So to begin round number four we are simply slip stitching into the very next chain two space which will be our starting point for this round and then we're doing a standing double crochet and I do mine by raising the loop to the height of a double crochet going around the body grabbing the yarn bringing it to the front like that, two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through both. You can of course use a chain start too if you want to. And then you do two more double crochets around the same chain two space. So we have our first, now we have a second and a third. Like that, 
and then you chain one and work three more double crochets around the same chain two space. So one and two and three like that. And this is our pedal. It consists of three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets around the same chain two space. And then you're making a slip stitch around the space of the two single crochets and tighten like that. So we get a lovely little negative space, just as we will get for the pedals, we will get here now too, okay? So just go over to the next chain two space and make three double crochets. So one, two, and three. And then we're chaining one and making three more double crochets around the same chain two space. So one and two, and three, like that. And then we are making a slip stitch around this space. I'm going under the back leg of the other single crochet too, or the first single crochet, because I think it pulls it up nicely, like that. So do this six more times and meet me up to close. See you in a bit. So I have now come all the way around and I have eight petals. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now it's really easy to miss the very last stitch. That is the slip stitch. So don't miss it. <laughs> so you're simply going in between the single crochets, making sure that you go all the way down and make a tight slip stitch like that. And then you cut your yarn and fasten off with an invisible join to the second stitch, which is the first real double crochet of this round, okay? And then you're fastening off where you hold the most yarn, which is on the back side of the pedals. So do that and meet me up for round number five. So for round number five, you are finding yourself any chain one space of a pedal and make a standing single crochet like that and then we're chaining five so one two three four five and that's the repeat <laughs> you see right so we are just going around the next chain one space of a pedal making a single crochet and then we're chaining five so one and two three four and five making a single crochet around the next chain one space and chaining five. So one, two, three, four, five. So we are doing this five more times and then meet me up to close. We have now come all the way around and you should now have eight chain five spaces that looks circular like this. If they look too big, just remove a chain. And if they look too tight, so they cramp your work like this, just add a chain, okay? It doesn't matter for the count, but it matters for how it looks. It should be nice and relaxed, not too tight, not too loose. Just lagom, as we say in Sweden. So what you will do now to end this round is simply slip stitch into the very first stitch of the round, which is our first single crochet. Like that. For round number six, we are starting with a standing stitch and if you find this tricky, you can just go ahead and do five single crochets around the next chain five space. But I'm actually beginning with the decrease because I think it gives the neatest, nicest look, okay? So what I will do, I'm just keeping my starting end out of the way. And then I go back into the chain five space that is placed on my right side, grabbing the yarn and pulling up a loop. And then I go into the next chain five space, skipping the single crochet, grabbing the yarn and pulling up a loop. I have now three loops on my hook, so I yarn over and pull through all three. And voila, we have a single crochet decrease. And then we are working five single crochets around the next chain five space. So one and two, three, four, and five. And then we're doing a single crochet decrease over this chain five space and the next, skipping the single crochet. So we're just grabbing the yarn, going into the next and grabbing the yarn. Like that, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And as you can tell, this stitch ends up right above our single crochet. 
making it super cute and neat, okay? So just keep on doing this, five single crochets around the next chain five space. One, two, three, four, and five. And then a single crochet decrease over the two chain five spaces. Like that. And carry on all the way around and meet me up to close. So we are now all the way around and I have made my last five single crochets around the chain five space. And since I started with a single crochet decrease, I will skip that now. But if you started with the five single crochets, just do that decrease and then fasten off with an invisible join to the second stitch. Okay, so do that and meet me up for round number seven. So for round number seven, we are making these little fans and calm spaces, as I call them, the anchor sets for our darling little heart-shaped popcorns that will come on the following round. And so what we need to consider is that we don't want a set of these 10 trebles going into where you put your starting end. So here's where you want to have your single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And then we are doing every other with these lovely sections. So just make sure we are not starting in the same point, but you can start one or two away. So on the opposite side of it, just making sure that you don't have it. Because if you have it where you closed your round on the previous one, it can um, put some stress on where you fastened off. And we don't want it to go loose. Okay, so begin preferably right across from where you ended your previous round. So to begin, you simply choose any single crochet two together that was not your starting or closing point from the previous round, okay? And into that, we are making a single crochet. And then we're chaining one and making a single crochet into that same stitch. Like that. And now we're skipping the next five stitches and into the next single crochet two together, we are placing 10 trebles yes you heard me right 10 trebles and if you know you are a very tight crocheter make the first one a triple treble okay just go along and follow me so i'm yarn overing twice because we're doing a treble going into that stitch keeping it quite loose as you can tell yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two and don't worry about this little section we are covering up that later okay so don't mind that, just make sure that it's not too tight so it cramps your work or too loose so it's just hanging droopy, okay? So yarn over twice and make another one like that and make eight more because we need ten in total, okay? So one, two and three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and our very last one. Ten. Well done. <laughs> it should now look something like this. You have a nice even fan. Cute, right? So just double check that you have 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because this will matter in our next round, okay? So just make sure that you have that. And then skip the next 5 stitches. And into the next single crochet two together. Make a single crochet. Chain 1, single crochet. Like that. And then we're skipping the next five. So one, two, three, four, five. And into the next single crochet, two together, we're making 10 more trebles. So just follow along, take it nice and slow. It doesn't matter if this one is a little bit droopy here. Okay, and if it's too tight, change it for a triple treble, meaning yarn over three times instead of two. Okay, so we have one, two, Three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, and ten. Just kind of untangle them a little bit. <laughs> there we go. And it should start looking something like this. So in every other we do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and then we skip the next stitches and working 10 trebles into the next. Skipping five and repeating two more times, okay? So do that and meet me up to close. So we have now come all the way around and it has gotten a lovely little square shape. So to close this round, you simply do an invisible join to the second stitch, which is this chain one here, and then fasten off your ends, preferably going back here and doing that, okay? So don't fasten them off here, but rather go back to here. So do that and meet me up for round number eight. So for round number eight, we are going into any of these chain one spaces from the previous round and make a standing double crochet because we are doing a five DC popcorn. So this is the first of five. So one, two, Make sure that you go around the space and not into the second single crochet there. Three, four, and five. Like that. Raising the loop slightly so I can grab it while I'm going back into the first double crochet. Grabbing the loop and pulling it through. And closing with a chain that is part of the stitch and not part of the pattern itself. And then we chain one and make another DC5 popcorn in the same space. So just scooch it over. It will be a little tight, but it will work. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five, like that. Doing this one again. We're going through the first, grabbing the loop and pulling it through and closing with a chain one. And now we have a little heart here and it's so, so sweet. And now we're chaining two, so one and two, skipping the next stitch, which is the single crochet that is very much hidden. <laughs> and then around the first treble, we are making a back post single crochet, okay? Take it nice and slow and tighten. Make sure that it is a tight back post and not too droopy, like that. And then we're making a back post single crochet over the next nine stitches. So we are doing one around each treble, okay? So we have three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Like that. Can you tell how adorable this is already? So we are now chaining two, and that is the repeat pretty much. We're skipping the next single crochet too. So I will do this one more time with you, okay? So round the chain one space make a five DC popcorn, meaning we need five double crochets to begin. So one, two, three, four, and five, like that. Going through the first stitch, grabbing the loop, pulling it through and closing with the chain that is part of the stitch and not part of the pattern. Chaining one. And now we're making another DC5 popcorn. So around the same chain one space, just make five double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. Like that, raising the loop, going through the first double crochet of the set of five, grabbing the loop and pulling it through and close with a chain one. 
part of the stitch, not part of the pattern. Chaining two, skipping the very hidden single crochet and around the next 10 trebles we're making a back post single crochet. The first one can be a little bit tricky so just take it nice and slow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and our very last one, ten. Like that. Looks gorgeous. And then we're chaining two and skipping the first single crochet, okay? So it's supposed to start to look like this. So we're pulling these ones forward with our back post stitches. And then we have these lovely little heart-shaped popcorns in place. So absolutely adorable. Do this two more times and meet me up to close, okay? Have fun! And here we have our finished sweet little eight round. You should now have four sets of these and lots of lovely little back post single crochets. It's adorable. <laughs> so I said that to finish off with uh, an invisible join to the second stitch, but I think I will just go ahead and slip stitch back down the center and then cut my yarn and weave in the ends on the back here, which preferably is somewhere here with the popcorn section, okay? Because I think it will hold up tighter. So go ahead and do that and meet me up for round number nine. So we are having our ninth round coming up here. And this time we are making these lovely little heart-shaped framings together with the prune stitches, which can be a little bit intimidating if you haven't done them before. But don't worry, I will show you exactly how to do them. And if you find them too tricky, just switch them out for some double crochets and half double crochets, okay? I'll let you know when we get there. But please try them out. They are so gorgeous and they give the most lovely little texture here. Let's do this. We begin this round around any chain two space placed to the right side of a popcorn and we simply do a standing half double crochet like this and then you go ahead and do five double crochets around the same chain two space so one two three four and five, like that. And then you go into the center of the popcorn and make a single crochet, like that. And then you chain one and skip the chain one space and go directly into the next popcorn, into the center and make a single crochet, like that. And now we are mirroring our way back down. So we are doing five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. And ending with a half double crochet around the same chain two space, like that. And now we do a slip stitch into the next stitch, which is the first back post single crochet of a set of 10. Like that, tighten. And here comes the broom stitches. And they might seem a little bit scary, but don't worry, it's just like a slip stitch with a raised loop. So we'll go ahead and do that. So just start off with a normal slip stitch, tighten like so. And then we're raising our hook and the loop to approximately the same height as our section here, okay, at the top of it. And then we're actually dropping it like that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and be very gentle here with the yarn because when you pull on this, this will go down. So make sure you have your working thread very loosely on your finger. 
And now you go back into the next stitch, grabbing the yarn gently and making a tight slip stitch like that. And if you feel like this one is going down, you can simply pull on it and it will pull thread from the neighbor. <laughs> okay, so we are just keep on doing this, going into the next stitch very slightly, lightly and slightly, tightening and pulling up a loop. And these doesn't have to be exactly at the same height. We are placing single crochets in them, so they can be a little bit looser and stuff. So it's just approximately the same. We're following the shape here. So this one at the top will be slightly lower. Can you tell? Trying to keep it somewhat at the same height. And as you see now, my loop disappeared a little bit. So I'm just going to pull on it. So it took yarn from the neighbor and then I'm just grabbing more yarn for that one. So it's okay if they are not exactly the same. Just take it nice and slow and we'll get there. And we will anchor them in the next round. So we are just leaving them here for now. Adorable. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and we should have eight. So we are doing seven. And eight. So just tighten them a little bit. There we go. And then for the next stitch, we are simply doing a slip stitch like so so if you're a little bit scared that these will drop while working simply go through them with your hook grabbing a little piece of yarn pulling it through and you can just secure it with that while working and I mean just very loosely do something like this and they will stay there they will not go away anyway okay and as an alternative, if you feel like this is way too hard, if you have tried it several times and it just doesn't work for you, just switch the first two and last two of the set of eights to double crochets and then the center ones for half double crochets. It will work too. It will not look exactly the same, but it will get you to the point where you need to be. So let's do one more repeat together. Around the next chain two space, we are doing a half double crochet followed by five double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then into the center of the popcorn, we are making a single crochet. Chaining one, skipping the chain one in between the popcorns and going right into the next one, into the center and make a single crochet. And then we're doing five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five, followed by a half double crochet. And now we're back to this section. So we are slip stitching in the first stitch, which is the first back post single crochet from the previous round of a set of 10. And now we're doing the loops. So just go into the next stitch, make a tight slip stitch and raise the loop to the same height as your section here. And then drop it and go into the next and repeat. Okay. So just take it nice and slow. As you see, mine went down, but that's okay. I just pull it up with my fingers. So just go ahead and do this eight times. It's trickier on camera, <laughs> but then it's good because then you get to see how I handle them moving away as well. Like that. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we are back to our very last one and we are making a slip stitch. With the raised loop, no, <laughs> we are dropping that. But this is our very last stitch. So this is the slip stitch and it will look something like this, okay? So as you can tell, they are not quite even and it doesn't matter if someone is a little bit lower, we can correct that with a little looser single crochet that will go in to anchor them in the next round. But before we run away to the next round, let's finish this one. So repeat this two more times and meet me up 
to close, okay? See you in a bit. And there we go. We have gone all the way around and it should look a little bit like this. Cute little fringes and this heart shaped kind of framing. To close this round now, all you do is placing an invisible join in the second stitch here and fastening off on the back side. So you're placing it in your first double crochet of a set of five and yeah, just hiding it well. And then we can continue on with round number 10. So for round number 10, we are beginning around any chain one space of our previous round and round before that because we're doing a spike double crochet. And what I mean with a spike double crochet is that we're essentially doing a normal double crochet. It's just a little bit elongated. So just go right in there and finish it approximately to the height of our sections here, okay? And then we do another double crochet, chaining two, and placing two more spike double crochets in here. So they are a bit taller than normal double crochets, as you can tell, but not that much. And then we're skipping the next stitch, which is the single crochet placed in the popcorn, and around the next six stitches, we're placing a back post single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six like that. Gorgeous. So we are now playing around with the same feel as for this section, mirroring it a bit. And now we're skipping the slip stitch that we can't even tell anymore. <laughs> and then just go into the loop and do a single crochet. Like that. And then we find our next broom stitch and do another single crochet. We will do so for all eight broom stitches, okay? So just take it nice and slow, go into the loop and do a single crochet as you would a normal stitch. I'm just keeping them kind of at the same height. So if you feel like this one is a little bit lower, just go up to the working height and do it like that, okay? And we now end up with quite a straight line, as you can tell here. So we are skipping the next slip stitch and around the next six stitches, beginning with the half double crochet here, we do a back post single crochet. And that is pretty much this repeat. So we have one, two, and three, four, five, and six like that and then we're skipping the next stitch which is the single crochet placed in the first popcorn and begin our next repeat with the spiked double crochets so this is how it should look i will do it one more time with you okay so we are doing a spike double crochet back down around both of these chain one spaces times two and then we chain two and then we do two more spike double crochets. So one and two, like that. We are skipping the next single crochet and around the next six stitches, we are doing a back post single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six like that skipping the slip stitch and making a single crochet in each of the next eight broom stitches nice and relaxed so one and two three four five six seven and eight. 
like that. And now we are skipping the slip stitch and doing a back post single crochet around the next six stitches, beginning with the half double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we skip the single crochet. So do this again for the remaining two sides and meet me up to close. Have fun! I don't know if you can hear it, but it's pouring outside. It's super rainy, so it's quite calming to just sit here with you and crochet a few more rounds. We have now come to the end of round number 10, and what we will do to close it is simply to slip stitch into the very first stitch. Because we are carrying on with the same yarn for our next round, you can cut it off and start as the pattern says in here, but I think we can manage to do it without cutting the yarn too, saving us a few ends, okay? <laughs> Always thankful for that. Now we are continuing on with round number 11. So for round number 11, we are in fact beginning in the chain two space, but I'm feeling a little bit reluctant to do ends right now. So I'm doing a little cheat and beginning a little bit earlier. So I will just chain one for the height and then I will go right in and do a front post half double crochet around this first spiked double crochet. And I will do the same for the next. So a front post half double crochet around that one too. And now we are at the corner. And we only have one starting end, so yay! <laughs> and around this chain two space, we are doing a half double crochet, chaining two, and then placing another half double crochet around the same chain two space. And now we're doing a front post half double crochet around the next two stitches, the spike double crochets, like that. And for the next 20 stitches, which are all of these, we are doing a single crochet in each across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, let's see, there we go, 15, <laughs> almost lost it, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Like that and now you should have a right where we started but I will just finish this one so I will just do a front post half double crochet around the next two stitches so this is the repeat you're doing a half double crochet chain two half double crochet around the chain two space here a front post half double crochet around the next two stitches and then one single crochet in the next 20 stitches taking you all the way up here where you do a front post half double crochet over the last two stitches before the chain space. So do that three more times and meet me up to close. And here we are, we have come all the way around. It's looking adorable. And if you're working with super must haves, this is where it will become a little bit bubbly, but don't worry, it will all sort itself out. Just make sure that you have the right stitch count and you'll be fine. It will stretch out absolutely beautifully when we put it on the project, okay? So simply close with an invisible join to the second stitch and meet me up for round number 12. So for round number 12, we are beginning around any chain two space with a standing single crochet, like that, followed by two more around the same chain two space. It should be three single crochets in total. And now in the stitch that is almost hidden, we are doing a single crochet too, like that. And in the next 24 stitches, we are doing a half double crochet. So one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, ninety, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. And you should now have arrived at the very last stitch before the corner. And in that one, we are placing a single crochet like that. So what you will do is simply do three single crochets around the chain two space, a single crochet in the next stitch, which is almost hidden, and then 24 half double crochets all the way across till the very last stitch where you will place a single crochet. Okay, so do this for the next three sides and then close with an invisible join to the second stitch and meet me up for our very last Round number 13. So we did it. We are at the very last stretch and I think you will know what to do now. But let's go over it just to be sure. So to begin, we start in the first of three single crochets placed in a corner and we start with a standing single crochet. Like that. And then we chain two. And now we skip the next stitch and into the next one we are making a single crochet like that and now we're making a single crochet in each stitch across and that will be everything that we will be doing for the a little something square and next time we will meet it's time to start making these large five squares into beautiful beautiful octagons it's gonna be so much fun i can't wait i love this framing part definitely one of my favorite things to do during this entire cow <laughs> it's the framing so yeah keep on going to the other side and i'll meet you there and now we have come all the way across so what we did was placing a single crochet in the first single crochet of a set of three in the corner chaining two skipping the next one which is the center one making a single crochet in the next which is the third and then one single crochet in each stitch across which should be 26. so do that and close with an invisible join to the second stitch being the first chain of the chain two and then meet me up for some final words And there we have it. We have finished our darling little, a little something square. <laughs> I hope you had lots and lots of fun making her. She is just so precious. Next week, we will begin this lovely octagon framing that is divided into two parts. So that is something to look forward to. And if you love this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up, leave a little comment below turn your notifications on and of course subscribe to our channel because next week we are back with our new part and a few more after that as well so until then bye